Symbolism was a late 19th century art movement of French, Russian, and Belgian origin in poetry and other arts. In literature, the style originates with the 1857 publication of Charles Baudelaire's Les Fleurs du Mal. The works of Edgar Allan Poe, which Baudelaire admired greatly and translated into French, were a significant influence and the source of many stock tropes and images. The aesthetic was developed by Stéphane Mallarmé and Paul Verlaine during the 1860s and 1870s. In the 1880s, the aesthetic was articulated by a series of manifestos and attracted a generation of writers. The name, Symbolist, itself was first applied by the critic Jean Moreas, who invented the term to distinguish the symbolists from the related decadence of literature and of art. Distinct from, but related to, the style of literature, symbolism in art is related to the Gothic component of Romanticism and Impressionism. Etymology <inaudible> The term, symbolism, is derived from the word, symbol which derives from the Latin symbolum, a symbol of faith, and symbolus, a sign of recognition, in turn from classical Greek symbolon symbolon, an object cut in half constituting a sign of recognition when the carriers were able to reassemble the two halves. In ancient Greece, the symbolon was a shard of pottery which was inscribed and then broken into two pieces which were given to the ambassadors from two allied city-states as a record of the alliance. Precursors and origins Symbolism was largely a reaction against naturalism and realism, anti-idealistic styles which were attempts to represent reality in its gritty particularity, and to elevate the humble and the ordinary over the ideal. Symbolism was a reaction in favor of spirituality, the imagination, and dreams. Some writers, such as Joris Karl Heismans, began as naturalists before becoming symbolists. For Heismans, this change represented his increasing interest in religion and spirituality. Certain of the characteristic subjects of the decadence represent naturalist interest in sexuality and taboo topics, but in their case, this was mixed with Byronic Romanticism and the world weariness characteristic of the fin de siècle period. The symbolist poets have a more complex relationship with Parnassianism, a French literary style that immediately preceded it. While being influenced by Hermeticism, allowing freer versification, and rejecting Parnassian clarity and objectivity, it retained Parnassianism's love of word play and concern for the musical qualities of verse. The symbolists continued to admire Théophile Gautier's motto of Art for Art's sake, and retained, and modified, Parnassianism's mood of ironic detachment. Many symbolist poets, including Stéphane Mallarmé and Paul Verlaine, published early works in La Parnasse Contemporaine, the poetry anthologies that gave Parnassianism its name. But Arthur Rimbaud publicly mocked prominent Parnassians and published scatological parodies of some of their main authors, including François Capet, misattributed to Capet himself. In L'Album Zoutique, one of symbolism's most colorful promoters in Paris was art and literary critic and occultist Josephine Pelladin, who established the Salon de la Rose plus Croix. The Salon hosted a series of six presentations of avant-garde art, writing and music during the 1890s, to give a presentation space for artists embracing spiritualism, mysticism, and idealism in their work. A number of symbolists were associated with the Salon. <laughs> Movement the Symbolist Manifesto Symbolists believed that art should represent absolute truths that could only be described indirectly. Thus, they wrote in a very metaphorical and suggestive manner, endowing particular images or objects with symbolic meaning. Jean Moreas published the Symbolist Manifesto, Le Symbolisme, in Le Figaro on 18 September 1886 see 1886 in poetry. The Symbolist Manifesto names Charles Baudelaire, Stéphane Mallarmé, and Paul Verlaine as the three leading poets of the movement. Moreas announced that symbolism was hostile to "...plain meanings, declamations, false sentimentality and matter-of-fact description," and that its goal instead was to "...clothe the ideal in a perceptible form," whose "...goal was not in itself, but whose sole purpose was to express the ideal." 
Ansi, Dan set art, les tableaux de la nature, les actions des humains, tous les phénomènes concrets ne sauraient se manifesta eux memes, ce sont la des apparences sensibles destinées à représenter leurs affinités esoteriques avec des idées primordiales. In this art, scenes from nature, human activities, and all other real world phenomena will not be described for their own sake, here, they are perceptible surfaces created to represent their esoteric affinities with the primordial ideals. In a nutshell, as Mallarmé writes in a letter to his friend Cazalis, to depict not the thing but the effect it produces. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Techniques. The symbolist poets wish to liberate techniques of versification in order to allow greater room for fluidity, and as such were sympathetic with the trend toward free verse, as evident in the poems of Gustav Kahn and Ezra Pound. Symbolist poems were attempts to evoke, rather than primarily to describe. Symbolic imagery was used to signify the state of the poet's soul. T. S. Eliot was influenced by the poets Jules Laforgue, Paul Valéry, and Arthur Rimbaud, who used the techniques of the symbolist school, though it has also been said that imagism was the style to which both Pound and Eliot subscribed. See Pound's Day Imagistes. Synesthesia was a prized experience. Poets sought to identify and confound the separate senses of scent, sound, and color. In Baudelaire's poem Correspondences, considered to be the touchstone of French symbolism also mentions forêts de symboles, forests of symbols Il est des perfumes phrase comme des chairs d'enfants, du comme les hoboy, verts comme les prairies, et d'autres, carampus, riches et triomphants, ayant l'expansion des choses infinies, comme l'ombre, le musc, le benjoin et l'ansens, qui chantent les transports de l'esprit et des sens. There are perfumes that are fresh like children's flesh, sweet like oboes, green like meadows, and others, corrupt, rich, and triumphant, having the expansiveness of infinite things, like amber, musk, benzoin, and incense, which sing of the raptures of the soul and senses, and Rimbaud's poem Voiles. A noir, e blanc, i rouge, u vert, o blue, voiles. A black, e white, i red, u green, o blue, vowels. Both poets seek to identify one sense experience with another. The earlier Romanticism of poetry used symbols, but these symbols were unique and privileged objects. The symbolists were more extreme, investing all things, even vowels and perfumes, with potential symbolic value. The physical universe, then, is a kind of language that invites a privileged spectator to decipher it, although this does not yield a single message so much as a superior network of associations." Symbolist symbols are not allegories, intended to represent, they are instead intended to evoke particular states of mind. The nominal subject of Mallarmé's La Signe, the swan, is of a swan trapped in a frozen lake. Significantly, in French, signe is a homophone of signe, a sign. The overall effect is of overwhelming whiteness, and the presentation of the narrative elements of the description is quite indirect. La Vierge, la vivace, et la belle aujourd'huive t il nous décaire avec un coup d'il ivre se lac dur oublié que hante sous le givral transparent glacier des vols qui a no pas fui, un signe d'autrefois se souvient que se lua magnifique mais qui sans espoir se délivre. The virgin, lively, and beautiful today, will it tear for us this hard forgotten lake that lurks beneath the frost, the transparent glacier of flights not taken with a blow from a drunken wing? A swan of long ago remembers that it is he, magnificent but without hope, who breaks free. <laughs> Paul Verlaine and the poet's modits Of the several attempts at defining the essence of symbolism, perhaps none was more influential than Paul Verlaine's 1884 publication of a series of essays on Tristan Corbier, Arthur Rimbaud, Stéphane Mallarmé, Marceline Desbordes Valmore, Gérard de Nerville, and Pauvre Lillian, Poor Lillian, an anagram of Paul Verlaine's own name, each of whom Verlaine numbered among the poet's modits, accursed poets. Verlaine argued that in their individual and very different ways, each of these hitherto neglected poets found genius a curse, it isolated them from their contemporaries, and as a result these poets were not at all concerned to avoid hermeticism and idiosyncratic writing styles. They were also portrayed as at odds with society, having tragic lives, and often given to self-destructive tendencies. These traits were not hindrances but consequences of their literary gifts. 
Verlaine's concept of the poète modded in turn borrows from Baudelaire, who opened his collection Les Fleurs du Mal with the poem Benediction, which describes a poet whose internal serenity remains undisturbed by the contempt of the people surrounding him. In this conception of genius and the role of the poet, Verlaine referred indirectly to the aesthetics of Arthur Schopenhauer, the philosopher of pessimism, who maintained that the purpose of art was to provide a temporary refuge from the world of strife of the will. Topic. Philosophy Schopenhauer's aesthetics represented shared concerns with the symbolist program, they both tended to consider art as a contemplative refuge from the world of strife and will. As a result of this desire for an artistic refuge, the symbolists used characteristic themes of mysticism and otherworldliness, a keen sense of mortality, and a sense of the malign power of sexuality, which Albert Samain termed a fruit of death upon the tree of life. Mallarmé's poem Les Fenêtres expresses all of these themes clearly. A dying man in a hospital bed, seeking escape from the pain and dreariness of his physical surroundings, turns toward his window but then turns away in disgust from L'homme à l'homme de revêtre dans le bonheur, oses souls appetimangent, et qui sentait à chercher cet ordre pour l'offrir à la femme latent ses petites, the hard-souled man, wallowing in happiness, where only his appetites feed, and who insists on seeking out this filth to offer to the wife suckling his children, and in contrast, he turns his back on life, tourne l'épaule à la vie, and he exclaims, Je me mire et me voice ange. Et je mures, et j'aime que la vitre soit l'art, soit la mysticité et renaître, portant mon rêve en diadème, au ciel antérieur au fleur et la beauté, I marvel at myself, I seem an angel, and I die, and I love whether the glass might be art, or mysticism to be reborn, bearing my dream as a diadem, under that former sky where beauty once flourished. Topic. Symbolists and decadents The symbolist style has frequently been confused with decadence, the name derived from French literary critics in the 1880s, suggesting the writers were self-indulgent and obsessed with taboo subjects. A few writers embraced the term while most avoided it. Jean Moray's manifesto was largely a response to this polemic. By the late 1880s, the terms symbolism and decadence were understood to be almost synonymous. Though the aesthetics of the styles can be considered similar in some ways, the two remain distinct. The symbolists were those artists who emphasized dreams and ideals, the decadents cultivated precio, ornamented, or hermetic styles, and morbid subject matters. The subject of the decadence of the Roman Empire was a frequent source of literary images and appears in the works of many poets of the period, regardless of which name they chose for their style, as in Verlaine's Langer. Je suis l'empire à la fin de la décadence, qui regard passer les grandes barbères blancs en composant des acrostiches indolent d'une style d'or au la langueur du soleil dans. I am the empire at the end of the décadence, who watches the large, white barbarians passing, while composing lazy acrostic poems in a gilded style in which the languor of the sun dances. Topic. Periodical literature. A number of important literary publications were founded by symbolists or became associated with the style. The first was La Vogue initiated in April 1886. In October of that same year, Jean Moreas, Gustav Kahn, and Paul Adam began the periodical Le Symboliste. One of the most important symbolist journals was Mercure de France, edited by Alfred Vallette, which succeeded La Pléiade, founded in 1890. This periodical endured until 1965. Pierre Laouis initiated Le Conque, a periodical whose symbolist influences were alluded to by Jorge Luis Borges in his story Pierre Minard, author of The Quixote. Other symbolist literary magazines included La Revue Blanche, La Revue Wagnerienne, La Plume and La Wallonie. Rémy de Gourmont and Félix Fénéon were literary critics associated with symbolism. The symbolist and decadent literary styles were satirized by a book of poetry, Les Dailyquescences d'Adore Flupit, published in 1885 by Henri Beauclair and Gabriel Vicaire. In other media Visual arts 
Symbolism in literature is distinct from symbolism in art although the two were similar in many aspects. In painting, symbolism can be seen as a revival of some mystical tendencies in the Romantic tradition, and was close to the self-consciously morbid and private decadent movement. There were several rather dissimilar groups of symbolist painters and visual artists, which included Gustav Moreau, Gustav Klimt, Mykologis Konstantinas Sirlonis, Jacek Molchevsky, Odilon Redin, Pierre Pouvis de Chavon, Henri Fantin Latour, Gaston Bussier, Edvard Munch, Felician Rops, and Jan Tuarop. Symbolism in painting was even more widespread geographically than symbolism in poetry, affecting Mikhail Vrubel, Nicholas Rarick, Viktor Borisov Masadov, Martiroz Sarian, Mikhail Nesterov, Leon Baxt, Elena Gorohova in Russia, as well as Frida Kahlo in Mexico, Elihu Vedder, Remedios Vero, Morris Graves, and David Chetlahe Paladin in the United States. Auguste Rodin is sometimes considered a symbolist sculptor. The symbolist painters used mythological and dream imagery. The symbols used by symbolism are not the familiar emblems of mainstream iconography but intensely personal, private, obscure and ambiguous references. More a philosophy than an actual style of art, symbolism in painting influenced the contemporary Art Nouveau style and Les Nabis. Music. Symbolism had some influence on music as well. Many symbolist writers and critics were early enthusiasts of the music of Richard Wagner, an avid reader of Schopenhauer. The symbolist aesthetic affected the works of Claude Debussy. His choices of libretti, texts, and themes come almost exclusively from the symbolist canon. Compositions such as his settings of Cinque Poems de Charles Baudelaire, various art songs on poems by Verlaine, the opera Peleus et Melisade with a libretto by Maurice Maeterlinck, and his unfinished sketches that illustrate two Poe stories, The Devil in the Belfry and The Fall of the House of Usher, all indicate that Debussy was profoundly influenced by symbolist themes and tastes. His best-known work, The Prelude à Le Pré Midi d'une Fon, was inspired by Mallarmé's poem, Le Pré Midi d'une Fon. The symbolist aesthetic also influenced Alexander Scriabin's compositions. Arnold Schoenberg's Pierrot Lenaire takes its text from German translations of the symbolist poems by Albert Giraud, showing an association between German expressionism and symbolism. Richard Strauss's 1905 opera Salome, based on the play by Oscar Wilde, uses a subject frequently depicted by symbolist artists. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Prose fiction. Symbolism's style of the static and hieratic adapted less well to narrative fiction than it did to poetry. Joris Karl Heisman's 1884 novel A Rebors English title, Against Nature or Against the Grain explored many themes that became associated with the symbolist aesthetic. This novel, in which very little happens, catalogues the psychology of De Essentes, an eccentric, reclusive antihero. Oscar Wilde was influenced by the novel, it being a major influence in writing his play Salome and Heisman's book appears in the picture of Dorian Gray, with the titular character becoming corrupted after reading the book. Paul Adam was the most prolific and representative author of symbolist novels. Les Demoiselles Goubert, 1886, co written with Jean Moreas, is an important transitional work between naturalism and symbolism. Few symbolists used this form. One exception was Gustav Kahn, who published Le Roy Fou in 1896. In 1892, Georges Rodenbach wrote the short novel Bruges la Morte, set in the Flemish town of Bruges, which Rodenbach described as a dying, medieval city of mourning and quiet contemplation. In a typically symbolist juxtaposition, the dead city contrasts with the diabolical reawakening of sexual desire. The cynical, misanthropic, misogynistic fiction of Jules Barbie d'Orvilly is sometimes considered symbolist, as well. Gabriele D'Annunzio wrote his first novels in the symbolist manner. Theatre The characteristic emphasis on an internal life of dreams and fantasies have made symbolist theatre difficult to reconcile with more recent trends. Auguste Villiers de Lille Adams' drama Axel Rev. Ed. 1890, is a definitive symbolist play. In it, two Rosicrucian aristocrats become enamored of each other while trying to kill each other, only to agree to commit suicide mutually because nothing in life could equal their fantasies. 
From this play, Edmund Wilson adopted the title Axel's Castle for his influential study of the symbolist literary aftermath. Maurice Maeterlinck, also a symbolist playwright, wrote The Blind 1890, The Intruder 1890, Interior 1891, Peleus and Melisade 1892, and The Blue Bird 1908. Eugenio de Castro is considered one of the introducers of symbolism in the Iberian Peninsula. He wrote Belkis, dramatic prose poem as he called it, about the doomed passion of Belkis, the Queen of Sheba, to Solomon, depicting in an avant-garde and violent style the psychological tension and recreating very accurately the 10th century BC Israel. He also wrote King Galaor and Polycrates' Ring, being one of the most prolific symbolist theoreticians. Lunier Poe (1869–1940) was an actor, director, and theater producer of the late 19th century. Lunier Poe sought to create a unified nonrealistic theatre of poetry and dreams through atmospheric staging and stylized acting." Upon learning about symbolist theatre, he never wanted to practice any other form. After beginning as an actor in the Théâtre Libre and Théâtre d'Art, Lunier Poe grasped on to the symbolist movement and founded the Théâtre de l'Herve where he was manager from 1892 until 1929. Some of his greatest successes include opening his own symbolist theater, producing the first staging of Alfred Jarry's UBU Roy 1896, and introducing French theatergoers to playwrights such as Ibsen and Strindberg. The later works of the Russian playwright Anton Chekhov have been identified by essayist Paul Schmidt as being much influenced by symbolist pessimism. Both Konstantin Stanislavsky and Sevalid Meyerhold experimented with symbolist modes of staging in their theatrical endeavors. Drama by symbolist authors formed an important part of the repertoire of the Théâtre de l'Herve and the Théâtre d'Art. Effect Among English-speaking artists, the closest counterpart to symbolism was aestheticism. The pre-Raphaelites were contemporaries of the earlier symbolists, and have much in common with them. Symbolism had a significant influence on modernism. Remy de Gourmont considered the Imagists were its descendants, and its traces can also be detected in the work of many modernist poets, including T. S. Eliot, Wallace Stevens, Conrad Aiken, Hart Crane, and W. B. Yeats in the Anglophone tradition and Ruben Dario in Hispanic literature. The early poems of Guillaume Apollinaire have strong affinities with symbolism. Early Portuguese modernism was heavily influenced by symbolist poets, especially Camilo Pessana. Fernando Pessoa had many affinities to symbolism, such as mysticism, musical versification, subjectivism, and transcendentalism. Edmund Wilson's 1931 study Axel's Castle focuses on the continuity with symbolism and several important writers of the early 20th century, with a particular emphasis on Yeats, Eliot, Paul Valéry, Marcel Proust, James Joyce, and Gertrude Stein. Wilson concluded that the symbolists represented a dreaming retreat into things that are dying the whole belle lettristic tradition of Renaissance culture perhaps, compelled to specialize more and more, more and more driven in on itself, as industrialism and democratic education have come to press it closer and closer. After the beginning of the 20th century, symbolism had a major effect on Russian poetry even as it became less popular in France. Russian symbolism, steeped in the Eastern Orthodoxy and the religious doctrines of Vladimir Soloviev, had little in common with the French style of the same name. It began the careers of several major poets such as Alexander Bloch, André Belay, and Marina Sveteva. Belay's novel Petersburg is considered the greatest example of Russian symbolist prose. Primary influences on the style of Russian symbolism were the irrationalistic and mystical poetry and philosophy of Fyodor Tyachev and Soloviev, the novels of Fyodor Dostoevsky, the operas of Richard Wagner, the philosophy of Arthur Schopenhauer and Friedrich Nietzsche, French symbolist and decadent poets such as Stéphane Mallarmé, Paul Verlaine and Charles Baudelaire, and the dramas of Henrik Ibsen. The style was largely inaugurated by Nikolai Minsky's article The Ancient Debate 1884 and Dmitry Moreshkovsky's book On the Causes of the Decline and on the New Trends in Contemporary Russian Literature 1892. Both writers promoted extreme individualism and the act of creation. Moreshkovsky was known for his poetry as well as a series of novels on God-men, among whom he counted Christ, Joan of Arc, Dante, Leonardo da Vinci, Napoleon, and later Hitler. His wife, Zenaida Gippius, also a major poet of early symbolism, opened a salon in St. Petersburg, which came to be known as the 
Headquarters of Russian Decadence. Andre Belize Petersburg novel, a portrait of the social strata of the Russian capital, is frequently cited as a late example of symbolism in 20th century Russian literature. In Romania, symbolists directly influenced by French poetry first gained influence during the 1880s, when Alexandru Macedonski reunited a group of young poets associated with his magazine Literatural. Polemicizing with the established Junimea and overshadowed by the influence of Mihai Emanescu, Romanian symbolism was recovered as an inspiration during and after the 1910s, when it was exampled by the works of Tudor Argezi, Ion Minulescu, George Bacovia, Matteo Caragial, Tristan Zara and Tudor Vianu, and praised by the modernist magazine Sabaratoral. The symbolist painters were an important influence on expressionism and surrealism in painting, two movements which descend directly from symbolism proper. The Harlequins, Poppers, and Clowns of Pablo Picasso's Blue Period show the influence of symbolism, and especially of Puvis de Chavon. In Belgium, symbolism became so popular that it came to be known as a national style, particularly in landscape painting. The static strangeness of painters like René Magritte can be considered as a direct continuation of symbolism. The work of some symbolist visual artists, such as Jan Tuarop, directly affected the curvilinear forms of Art Nouveau. Many early motion pictures also employ symbolist visual imagery and themes in their staging, set designs, and imagery. The films of German Expressionism owe a great deal to symbolist imagery. The virginal, good girls, seen in the cinema of D. W. Griffith, and the silent film, bad girls, portrayed by Theta Bara, both show the continuing influence of symbolism, as do the Babylonian scenes from Griffith's Intolerance. Symbolist imagery lived on longest in horror film. As late as 1932, Carl Theodor Dreyer's Vampire showed the obvious influence of symbolist imagery. Parts of the film resemble tableau vivant recreations of the early paintings of Edvard Munch. Topic: <laughs> Symbolists. Topic: <laughs> Precursors. William Blake (1757–1827), English writer, Songs of Innocence. Caspar David Friedrich (1774–1840), German painter, wanderer above the sea of fog. Alexander Pushkin (1799–1837), Russian poet and writer, Eugene Onegin. Prosper Merimi (1803–1870), French novelist. Dord Markovich Koder (1806–1891), Serbian poet, Romaranka. Gerard de Nerval (1808–55), French poet. Jules Amédée Barbie Dorvali (1808–1889), French writer. Edgar Allan Poe (1809–49), American poet and writer. The narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. Mikhail Lermontov (1814–1841), Russian poet and writer, a hero of our time. Charles Baudelaire (1821–67), French poet, Les Fleurs du Mal. Gustave Flaubert (1821–1880), French writer, Madame Bovary. Dante Gabriel Rossetti (1828–82), English poet and painter, Beata Beatrix. Christina Rossetti (1830–1894), English poet. Topic: <laughs> Authors. Listed by year of birth. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Influence in English literature. English language authors who influenced or were influenced by symbolism include. Topic. Symbolist visual artists Listed by year of birth Topic. Symbolist playwrights Gerhard Hauptmann 1862 German Federico Garcia Lorca 1898 Spanish Maurice Maeterlinck 1862 to 1949, Belgian. Lunier Poe 1869 to 1940, French. Topic: 
composers affected by symbolist ideas topic gallery topic see also Belle Epoque Les Nabis Rosicrucianism Sigmund Freud Synthetism The Yellow Book Visionary Art